Good morning to you. As you can see, I'm sitting in my vehicle again. Um, just a short announcement. Um, I've uh, started a, a rumble channel, but I'm not using it much at the moment. Um, it's really just there as a backup um, in case I get thrown off here at any time, which, uh, with the way things go, we never know when those things can happen. But um, please continue to watch me on here. Like, subscribe, um, and um, give a thumbs up. And uh, it always helps the algorithms. And uh, my main concern, really, when I do these things is that the, the gospel goes out not just um, to a, a small amount of people who, who know the Lord and uh, can agree with me, but um, that it goes out to the world, that um, people can come to know Jesus from just, just watching and hearing the word. Um, sometimes people are very close to the kingdom of God. And... Um, they don't know it, but they're actually going to be saved. God has already got his hand on them. And uh, it may sound strange, a strange thing to say. I know sometimes I, I speak off the cuff on these channels and I may at times misspeak. But what I mean is that um, there are people out there whom the Lord has his hand on and he's chosen. And um, I, in fact, uh, I, I think there's somebody I know myself. In fact, I know there's somebody that... Um, I know the Lord has their hand on, and um, it's very much where Jesus said, you've, you're near the kingdom of God, you're very close. And um, it just takes that tip, doesn't it, for somebody to hear something and just to make that final decision to come to Christ. Anyway, today's message is this. Total surveillance, total control, and total destruction. Proverbs 15 verse 3, it's just a verse to start with here, and it's, it's a verse of encouragement really, and it says this, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Everywhere the Lord's eyes are, it doesn't matter whether you know him or whether you don't, he created this world, he established it by the work of his hands. And, as we know, the three oms, don't we? Omnipresent, he's everywhere. Omniscient, he's all knowledge. And omnipotent, he's all powerful. And if he's that kind of a God, then it's easy for him to be everywhere, watching and beholding our lives. And um, that's something that, in a way, is, it's a great comfort to know, isn't it? That even when we're going through the, the midst of evil, God is still there within, within, um, within reach, um, very close to us. And um, <clears throat> Job is a, uh, an example of somebody who went through the most difficult of times, and yet he never once renounced his God. But there's an interesting scripture in Job, uh, which is the converse, if you like, of Proverbs 15.3. And uh, we know our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, waiting for whom he can devour. And um, in John 1, Job, sorry, Job 1, 7, um, we understand what Satan does. And he says here, I'll back up to 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down on it. Now, we know that Satan's not omnipotent. We know that he has legions of fallen angels that um, operate with him. We know that his kingdom is powerful. Through Ephesians 6, we fight not flesh and blood and its principalities and powers. And Satan can still walk up and down the earth we never know, do we, when we're bumping into him or when he's got his hand close by us. He can't know us all individually, maybe, but he certainly does have information given to him. And um, so he walks up and down on the earth and, as we know, he seeks to devour. He seeks to steal, to kill and to destroy. He patrols. And that got me thinking about surveillance and I live in the UK, and the UK is probably what is regarded as one of the most watched countries on earth. 
we've got the most CCTV of any nation on earth. Everywhere you walk, up the pavements, um, in the shopping centres, in the shops, we're constantly being filmed. And of course, most people don't like being filmed. Um, in fact, there are times when I also don't like being filmed. You know, you're, you're, you're very much exposed, when, especially when you've stuck your head above the parapet and you've said things that authorities are not too keen on you saying. So we're a watched society, CCTVs everywhere. Not only are we watched by cameras, but we're tracked, aren't we, now with this digital age. Um, and as I've spoken about before, the advent of the fourth industrial revolution. So we're the most watched society. Every transaction that we do, I remember I was sitting in a, in a, a, a local pub where we often go, a group of friends of ours, and I didn't know this. And uh, my friend is, is very much into gadgets. And he said, uh, he wanted, he showed me Google. And he said, look, I'm, I've been tracked for the last few years. And he showed me a list of all the places that he'd been to, the restaurants, um, all the different shops he'd gone to, all the different locations he'd gone to. And it was all listed and dated by Google, simply because he had that device in his pocket. And I was quite shocked. I didn't realize that they actually track you that much. But wherever you carry that smartphone now, they know where you are. And um, of course, every financial transaction is also watched, isn't it? Everyone's tracked. They know what you buy. They know where you bought it. They know what time you bought it. So we're hemmed in, aren't we, by all this technology. It's, it's there all the time, numbered constantly. We grew up with a, 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 in America. You'd have had a social security number. We also have it here in the UK. You're numbered from birth. You're monitored. You're followed. But it's great to know, isn't it, that the eyes of the Lord are, are also to and froing around the earth. And he knows those who are his. But the devil also, he also knows many who are, not, who are his. And he's trying to drag them into his kingdom more and more. And his weapons of control by the world are getting more and more sophisticated because man is developing more and more. As it says in Daniel, there will be an increase of knowledge, a flood of knowledge in the last days. And we're seeing that, aren't we? And I've spoken about it before with the digital technology, the media communication. As we know that the world is in the power of the wicked one and the media are doing his bidding. But what is the aim? The aim is to enslave, to hem your world in, to make it smaller and smaller. Everything requiring permission to do so that you've got no independent thought, no desire to investigate whether what's being said to you is right. And in a funny kind of sense, in many people, as I've seen since this pandemic, so-called pandemic has, has been on the go for the last two years, it seems to be a, a source of comfort for many people. A sense of security, remember, peace and safety. To know that, that um, Big Brother, the government, is looking after you. Of course, all these models come from, from communist states, don't they? Especially China with its social credit score. And so <clears throat> I've spoken about it before the Great Reset. And uh, I don't know whether I'd be thrown off for using the words Great Reset, but uh, I've used them. But I made a note here of what, what the Great Reset really is. And it's basically this total control. They want to totally control you. And it's interesting, uh, there's a quote here by Scott Morrison. He, Prime Minister of Australia and he said this just the other day and you can get this off the World Economic Forum's website. Australia has jumped five years ahead in digital adaption in almost the blink of an eye. I'll read that again to you. Australia has jumped five years ahead in digital adaption in almost the blink of an eye. And he's talking about just in the last well, couple of years really and We've seen how Australia has behaved. And those of you that are in Australia will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ursula von der Leyen, yes, I've got that correct. Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Union, I believe. She wrote this. 
the European need for chips will double in the next decade. The European need for chips will double in the next decade. More and more technology, more and more people being surveilled. Remember, the third world is, is somewhat behind us, so they have to get these chips um, manufactured quickly. They have to get the procedures sorted very quickly so that third world countries can get on board. Satan wants to know you. I've got written down here. Satan wants to know you, of course, in inverted commas, to ensure that you don't receive the truth of the gospel. That's his desire. He wants to hold you and bind you and blind you to the truth. And of course, technology is a great way, isn't it, of blinding people to the truth. Constant propaganda being thrown at people. A couple of scriptures here to share with you. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. <clears throat> and it says this. Now this is Paul speaking to the Corinthians. And as I said earlier, God knows everything about us. He knows all our thoughts. And at the same time, too, God wants us to come into a uniformity of thinking. And he says here in um, verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 1, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye speak, all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. God wants us as the body of Christ to be in the same mind and the same judgment. Why? Well, if you think about it, we're counteracting. We're counteracting the work of the devil. He also wants us to be of the same mind. 1 Corinthians 2, and I'm going to read verses 9 to 16. Keep that one in mind, verse 10. And I'll read to you 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 16. <clears throat> Listen carefully here. But as, is at, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. For we have the mind of Christ. And this is the, the crux of this whole piece of Scripture, the mind of Christ, so that we will not give our minds over to the technocrats, to those that want to control us with their digital power. The Great Reset is total control. God's kingdom is about total freedom. So... What is Paul saying here? He's saying this. <clears throat> I just want to read to you these, these five points. He wants us to speak the same thing. That's the same gospel. Having the mind of Christ. Having the, the things of the character of God that we speak from our hearts through our mouths to edify people. So that there be no divisions amongst us as the body of Christ. So that we, there's no in, infighting. So that we walk in harmony with unity with one another. We've got to do that. Remember I've spoken about the army before and the breaking of ranks. And um, when people start to go AWOL in the body of Christ, we can't do that anymore. There's no more time for that. Perfectly joined together, Paul says. Perfectly joined together. 
the arm, connected with the ligaments, connected with the bones, so that it operates perfectly from the shoulder, the legs from the hips, and the eyes in your head and the tongue in your mouth, all working towards one thing, glorifying the Lord. Being of the same mind and the same judgment, Paul says, having all those things that come from God. These are our counteracting forces against the Great Reset, because the Great Reset is the opposite of the cross. They talk about building back better. All they're doing really is they're destroying. They're building back, well, they're building effectively. They're building something and it's a Tower of Babel. And it's gonna come crashing down. Verse 18. I think this was 1 Corinthians 10 again. I'm going back to verse, yes, verse 18, 1 Corinthians 10. I just caught this on my notes here. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. It's either the power of God or it's foolishness. And to those whom it is foolishness, they're not owned by God. They're owned by the system. And the system, uh, we know, is getting bigger and bigger. <clears throat> and let's, let's end with this. Verse 10. The Spirit searches the, all things even the deep things of God. And only the Spirit of God knows your heart. And so <clears throat> we have no, the word is no truck, we have no truck with the things of the enemy. And yes, it's going to get more and more difficult. They'll want more and more information from us, won't they? They want to know more and more things about us, especially on, on the medical side. And we know what their intentions are. We're not ignorant of the devices of Satan. So today, my exhortation to you is that the total surveillance, the total control, and the total destruction is for the people that are not saved, for those that regard what we speak of and the way we live as foolishness. And the doors, as I've said before, the doors of the ark are closing. And the more that man gains knowledge, the further he goes away from the power and searching of the living God. So even be encouraged that even the, as we know, we are being watched and surveilled and monitored and tracked. The eyes of the Lord are upon us today and he searches our hearts. Have a blessed day.